I'm going to talk to you about the trigonometric identities, and I'm going to start with the Pythagorean one. So we're going to remind ourselves this is a unit circle. Remember what it means to be a unit circle? It means the radius is 1. Now keep in mind, this is still my x-axis here. This is my y-axis here. I know this value here is 1, this is 1, this is minus 1, and this is minus 1. Now let's think about any generic place that I go onto this thing. So for example, uh, let's say I, I don't know, I draw myself some random angle somewhere, something like that one, just that. So let's say, so I finish right here, at this point right here. At this point we'll have x, y coordinates. And remember what we write for x, y coordinates. If we do things in terms of an angle here, so that's right here, let's say this here is an angle theta here. If we do things in terms of uh, angle, then our x and y coordinates can also be written as cos theta for x and sine theta for y. That's just to remind you, we've done other videos showing that, but just so you know, the x is the cos, the y is the sine. Well, what this means is that I can take this then, I can take this piece and make a triangle out of it like this and like this. Where this right here is my y, this is my x, and this value right here is the hypotenuse. But good news, because it's inscribed in a circle here, this is 1, because that's the radius. Remember, if it's a unit circle, the radius is 1. So now I know a 1, x, and a y. Well, remember what the Pythagorean, uh, Pythagorean theorem says. That would be that... Um, well, we could say the hypotenuse squared is going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So let me write it like that. Uh, maybe I'll do it in a different color. All right, Pythagorean theorem. What it, would it say here? How would it help us? Well, we could say then that, watch carefully here, we could say that 1 squared, which is the hypotenuse here, I could say that 1 squared equals the x value squared, so x squared plus y squared. That I could say. All right, so that's that's the first thing I could say. That's the Pythagorean identity, right? It's the Pythagoras theorem. All right. Mm. Well, I could then take one and then uh, just get one by itself. So that means that I'll take the uh, you know one squared. Sorry, it's just one. So I could say then that one equals x squared plus y squared. All right. So so far not so bad. I just squared it. Okay. Now what? Well, remember. Um, what well, we just said that x and y equals, but, so but, remember that x equals cos theta, and remember that y equals sine theta. So that means wherever I see an x, I replace it with cos theta, wherever I see a y, I replace it with sine theta. Well, that means then I can rewrite this as, now I'll put these ones on the left side instead. So I'll start off with this, I'll say cos theta, all that squared because right, I'm going to square this. It's x squared and x is cos theta. So cos theta squared plus sine theta squared. That equals 1. I've just put the 1 on the right and put these ones on the left side. Um, that's what it means to be equal, right? The left equals the right. Well, then that means the right equals the left. So there we go. Now we have a, a short form for this. Instead of saying cos theta all that squared, we have a different short form where we actually say cos squared theta. We actually write it like that. Instead. So cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is a little bit awkward, but there it is. And that's actually our Pythagorean identity. We just proved it. Okay, so I'll write it again. So that means we know that cos squared of an angle plus sine squared of an angle. And remember, this notation, it just means it's cos theta squared. It really means this. Okay, so this is the same thing as that. This is the same thing as that. Uh, all that equals 1. That is my Pythagorean identity. Hooray! And this is very, very useful. Uh, this is actually found in your formula booklet, so I'll just uh, put it there. So there we go. So yay! Hooray! Now, where can we use this? I mean, it's very useful because we can convert uh, from cos squareds if we want them to be sine squareds, or vice versa, from sine squareds to be coses. So let me show you like what you might do here. You might say, all right, uh, I mean, yes, if ever you see a cos squared plus sine squared, you can just replace it with one. But you can also say, uh, what if you got cos squared theta by itself? Just to see, so cos squared theta, what would that give you? Well, you just move the sine squared to the right, so it'd be one minus sine squared theta. 
And you can also say that sine squared theta equals one minus cos squared theta. So both of these are also helpful. So just so you know, that's sort of how we can practically use this. Okay, so that's useful when you're converting. So that was that one. This is why uh, math is the only sine squared x plus cos squared x for me. Why is that? Because this is one. Math is the only one for me. <laughs> that is so bad. Remember, that's because this equals one. <laughs> oh, I love that one. All right, so we got ones. Uh, they're called the double angle identities. So those ones up there are also in your formula booklet, which is nice. We have one that tells us that the sine of 2 times theta, okay? So if we have inside the sine here, we have 2 theta, we have something here. We also have the cosine of 2 theta. So these are the two double angle formulas here. Yeah, I'll write it nicer. Okay, so cos of 2 theta. Now the sine of 2 theta is actually kind of nice. It's just 2 sine theta, cos theta. So it's just these two right here multiplied together. That's kind of nice. The cos 2 theta one, however, is a little bit more complicated. There's two different versions. There is that the cos squared theta minus sine, whoops, minus sine squared theta. But it can also be written as, I'm writing a little bit crooked here, so you'll have to um, excuse me here. I'm just uh, writing kind of bad here. Let me just try to fix it like this. Um, it can be 2 times cos squared theta minus 1, or it can be written as uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Phew. So this is the other one here. This is the double angle formulas. And these ones are here, good news. They're also Oops, like this right here, and attempt to uh, paste here. What? I gotta go like this instead. All right, there we go. So formula booklet, also yes. So good news for that, you don't have to memorize these, you'll look them up. So let's see if we can use these in some way. So this is here, the really important equations, these plus this one right here, the Pythagorean identity. Let's see what we can do with them. Now we have a question right here. By the way, I like this because it's a part in the question where it's obtuse. This is from Family Guy. Look, am I being obtuse because the angle is greater than 90 degrees? <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh. All right, so you're given that 1 minus cos squared theta equals 9 over 16. We're supposed to find the value of sine x. We're told that sine x is greater than 0. And we've got some other stipulations. We've got to find cos, and then we've got to find cos of 2x. Let's see if we can do it. This looks really horrible, like 1 minus cos squared x. Oh god, what do we do? Good news. Pythagorean identity will help. Look, cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. Sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. Will any of these help us? Sure will. I'll write this down. So the uh, Pythagorean identity, let's do that one. Pythagorean identity. What does it say? Remember it says sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. Well, that means then one minus cos squared theta, that must be sine squared theta, right? So that's what I'm starting with, right? So sine squared theta whoops, equals one minus cos squared theta. Good news then. That means instead of writing one minus cos squared, I'm gonna replace it then with just sine squared. Isn't that nice? I'm gonna replace it there, okay? so. That means I'm going to say then that sine squared, uh, whoops, it wasn't a theta. In this case, it's an x, but still. So sine squared x is the same thing as saying 9 over 16. Isn't that nice? Okay, so that's how I did that. I knew that this here was the same thing as sine squared x. I knew that only because of the Pythagorean identity. Yay. All right, so if I do this, what can I do from there? Well, because I've got something squared, I can undo it by taking the square root, right? So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to attempt to do that. Um, so I'm going to take the square root, whoa, square root of both sides here. So if I do this, then let's see, what do I get? I get, because I want to get just the sine of x. So if I get just the sine of x, what do I do? I do sine x equals, well, technically it's plus or minus 
the square root of 9 over 16. Technically, it's plus or minus. However, we're told that sine x is greater than 0. What does that mean? Well, that means I only take the plus then. Do you notice then? So that's, that's what tells me that part. So now I know that sine x equals, well, square root of 9 over square root of 16, because I can separate them. Well, then that's good, because now I'm done, because I have sine x then equals, let's see, what's the square root of 9? It's a perfect square. It's just 3. And square root of 16 is 4. Yay. So there we go. I'm done the first part. Hooray, hooray. Now I'm told that x is obtuse. What does that mean? Well, that means that this angle, whatever this x is, I don't know. I know what sine x is now. Uh, but I don't know what the cosine of x is. So let's just take a look and try to draw some unit circle business. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. So when is sine positive? Let's maybe take a look at that, okay, and say when is, maybe I'll write it down like this, maybe in purple here. So when, because the only thing I know is this sine here. So when is sine x equal to a positive? That's the question I need to know. Well, remember my uh, quadrants, I have uh, all students take calculus. This tells me that, let's see, all are positive up here. So it could be up here. could be that one. That could be okay. And it could also be up here. That's when sine is positive. Could it be down here? No, sine is negative. Could it be down here? No, because uh, sine is negative here. So it's either this or this. And the fact that we're told that it's obtuse, what does that mean? Obtuse means um, x is greater than 90 degrees. Well, that means it can't be this one. Do you notice? And then I know, that's how I know for sure, for sure, then the angle must just be something like this. It must only go to the left, only like this. Okay, that's what I know now. I know this is angle x, which I don't know its value. Now, this is a right angle triangle. And I know that the yeah, sine is going to be positive. That's true. What else do I know, though? I know that the cosine will be negative. See, that'll be kind of nice. I'll know that the cosine will be negative. Now, let's try to figure this out. I don't know these values, but I kind of do. Look, sine, remember Sokotoa? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. From that, that means I know that sine, let's see here, opposite is 3. I know the hypotenuse is 4. So the question basically lies, what value will fit here? Like, what value should the bottom be? I don't know what I should call that. Maybe I'll call it like, I don't know, D maybe or something. I'll just call it a D for now. Because I don't know what to call it. I'll just call it D. Well, I know the high of Pythagoras theorem. I know that uh, 4 squared, because I know these three sides, 4 squared is going to equal 3 squared plus D squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem, not the identity, but the actual Pythagorean theorem. All right, so I know that 4 squared is 3 squared plus D squared. All right, I can get D squared by itself. So I can say d squared is going to be 4 squared minus 3 squared, because I moved my 3 squared to the left. Mm. Well, let's go ahead and figure this out. So d is going to be equal to, let's see, the square root of, what's 4 squared? It's 16. And 3 squared is 9. And 16 minus 9, what's that? That's 7. So I know that d equals square root of 7. All right, that's good to know, because now I can redraw my triangle. Let me just redraw it properly so it looks a little bit nicer. So now I can redraw it like this, la, 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 like this. There we go. I know that this is root 7. I know that this right here is 3. I know this is 4. And my angle here is called x. All right, well, now I can find cosine, because remember that cosine is... So cos x equals, let's see, so ka to a ka is a adjacent over hypotenuse. So that'll be root 7 over the hypotenuse, which is 4. But because I'm in this quadrant over here, remember this, last, last little step here, we always got to check the quadrants. Remember, though, so sine is positive, but that means that cosine will be negative. This piece right here is what I'm going to use. Look, I'm going to make it right here. I'm going to say, hey, because I was finding a cosine, I have to throw a negative in front of it. So that's how I know finally then that cos x equals minus root 7 over 4.
Now you could have sort of told that without even checking for the quadrants by just looking at this right here. You know that I went to the left, so this had to be a negative number just because if you look at this right here, it's going to the left, left here. So left would be a negative. Or you can just look at the quadrants, it doesn't matter. All right, looks like it's uh, pretty hard, but actually now we just got, to, well, we got to do cos of uh, 2x now. This is the last step here we're doing. Um, well, we need to know one of our double angle formulas here. We can use whichever ones we like. I don't think we should make it too, too complicated. Maybe we'll just do this one right here, this middle one. 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Let's do that one. Okay, so I'll use that one. Double angle formula. So it's going to be equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Let me do that and then use my value. So let me see here. So that means it's going to be equal to, let's see now, it's going to be 2. And what's cos? Cos is uh, minus root 7 over 4. That's what cos theta is. But it's got to be squared minus 1. Let's keep going then. So what does that give me? That gives me, um, let's see now, 2 times, well, a minus number squared is going to be positive, which is nice. A root 7 squared is going to be just 7. And 4 squared is going to be 16. So it's going to be this minus 1. All right, keep going. So 2 times 7 is 14. So 14, whoops. 14 divided by 16. Minus, now I'm supposed to do a 1 here, but i got to get a common denominator, so I'll make them both over 16. So 16 over 16 is the same as 1. That gives me, let's see here, it's um, 14 minus 16 is minus 2 over 16. And let's see, what else can I do here? Mm, oh, I can divide them both by 2. 2 divided by 2 gives me a 1. 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. Am I done? Yeah, I think I'm done. So that means then that cos of 2x maybe put in brackets like they did here, equals minus 1 over 8. So to see, we were able to use this double angle formula. In theory, we should have been able to use any of the other versions. So we should have been able to do the 1 minus 2 sine squared. Well, the sine was this right here, and if we did 2 of this right here, then we would have, um, well, we have to do this thing squared first. It would be 9 over 16, and two of those would be 18, and so one minus those. So anyway, this should have worked, no matter how you looked at it. In this case right here, this is how we can solve all this. These are the double angle formulas. Now, why should you care? Well, we can use these in proofs. Um, the Pythagorean identity, for example, um, is really useful for you know converting from one trig function to another. But basically, these really help you when things are getting a little bit tough, then you can actually use these identities to make your life a little bit easier.